So Premiere Pro has a brand new way of managing color. And that means that you now have to change your workflow when it comes to color correction and color grading. And although this new change brings about a really cool feature, there are some problems that I've encountered using this brand new color management system in Premiere Pro. There are some pros, but at the same time, there are some drawbacks. One of the things that you have to keep in mind though, if you use this new feature that they have, is that you can no longer use LUTs the same way you've been using them in Premiere Pro for the past all of these years. All your LUTs, if you use this new working space, are almost useless but I found a workaround, which I'll be talking about in just a bit. So first of all, Premiere Pro has now introduced ACES, which is an industry standard color management system. Like big productions are using it. DaVinci Resolve, which is really good at color grading, already had that eons ago. But I guess better late than never in Premiere Pro, right? So ACES is an industry standard for managing color throughout the life cycle of a production. One of the biggest benefits of ACES is that when it comes to footage shot in a lot of different cameras, ACES is sort of able to bring them all together so that they can all start from the same starting point before you go into color correction and color grading. And I have made a video about how to use ACES in Premiere Pro to match footage from different cameras in a previous video. I'll be linking it in the description or it'll be up here. So traditionally in Premiere Pro, when you were color correcting and color grading footage, you were essentially color grading footage already converted to Rec. 709, which is a smaller color space. But now with ACES in Premiere Pro, you're able to convert that footage into the ACES CCT color space, which is a much larger color space compared to Rec. 709. So that means that you have more flexibility when it comes to correcting your footage and color grading your footage. Previously, when you had log footage, you weren't able to fully access that log capability, but now you can. And let me show you though, some of the drawbacks, unfortunately, that I found in Premiere Pro with this new color management system. So when you go to your Lumetri control panel, you now have these settings. I go through all of these settings in another video, which I'll be linking up here or in the description below. The auto detect log feature is much more accurate compared to the previous versions. So when you select this, Premiere Pro will automatically detect log footage and convert that to the appropriate color space. So right here, it detected that this is Canon Log 3 Cinema Gamut footage, which is really cool. So if I uncheck that, I'm also able to just override that and manually select Canon Log 3 as well. So now the second thing that is key is that when you're matching footage or you wanna take advantage of all of the data of your log clip is that you have to go under sequence settings over here and go to wide gamut tone mapped. And this is going to change your working color space to ACES CCT. Previously, let me show you, we had Rec. 709 and the regular Rec. 709 working space, which is what it was all these years before this update. So the working color space was in Rec. 709 and once we move to white gamut, this changes to ACES CCT. So now you're able to have access to all of that data. A main drawback is that if you have a bunch of creative LUTs, you are no longer able to just drag and drop those LUTs into your footage if you're working in ACES CCT. Let me show you. So I have all of this selected. I am now working in a wide gamut color setup in ACES CCT. Let's drop a LUT in here. Let's drop this GNY LUT from my LUT pack into this clip. And although it apply the look, you can see that it is not good at all, I think. The, the roll off in the highlights and the midtones in the skin here, it's very abrupt, it's not smooth at all. And particularly an issue that I find is here in this light, that roll off of that highlight, it's, it's just terrible. Overly saturated and this LUT does not work at all. And if I were to adjust the strength of that LUT, it doesn't do much. It's still really bad, especially over here. The strength, it, it improves here in my skin tones here, but if you have this here, it just looks terrible. 
So let's undo all of this. I will disable auto detect log and under input LUT, I'll select cinema gamut Canon log three. And I'm still in that Asus CCT color workspace, but what you see now is something very interesting. The highlight roll off here, it's a lot smoother. I started digging around in the Premiere Pro's website explaining all of these new features of color management and I found this line that says that although it's not quite related to what we're doing right now, it says that input tone mapping and input gamma compression can simplify SDR, standard Rec. 09 workflows, at the expense of occasionally making it difficult to retrieve highlight detail that ends up overly compressed, which is, I think, what's happening exactly with that tube light and that highlight. And this is not really talking about the auto log detect media and all that stuff, but I think that this issue that they're seeing here might also be happening with this. So I have now a Sony S-Log3 clip here and I have two tube lights in the background. So I'm going to auto detect log here. And as you can see here, this is just terrible. Not good at all. Premiere Pro is recognizing that this is Sony S-Log3 as gamut 3 Cine, which is correct. But the rendering of that is just not great. So if I were to turn off the auto detect log media, and select this conversion LED myself, you can see now that this is a lot nicer. So it's still kind of flat looking. I can still go ahead and further color correct uh, and eventually grade this clip, but at least the highlight roll off, it's a lot smoother. With this LUT from directly from Sony, this conversion LUT, as opposed to using the auto detect log. Now, there's another issue that comes with this is that if I am in the wide gamut, it's a CCT color space, this is not a true LUT because this is a LUT to convert stuff to S-Log3 to Rec. 709. But I am working in Asus CCT, so I'm not really treating this clip the correct way if I am editing in a wide gamut Asus CCT working space. Needless to say, this is not the solution. However, when I go to a different clip that does not have that kind of roll off, for example, something like this, if I just have auto detect log enabled, the clip is pretty good. The, the highlights here are not as obvious, so this clip looks pretty good if you use auto log. If you're using one of these LUTs from the manufacturer that converts your log to Rec. 09, you can't really work in the wide gamut working space. Well, you technically can, but I think what Premiere Pro would be doing in this case is once you convert that from log to Rec. 09 using the manufacturer's LUT, then that sequence would just convert that Rec. 09 back to Asus CGT. So I'm not sure exactly if that is going to affect the amount of data and how you color grade or color correct your footage. So that's something that I need to explore a little bit more. So once I find out and figure out these, these things, then I'll update you in a future video. Another thing that I find that Premiere Pro can't really do well yet is auto detect footage that is logged that has either been re-exported and have lost that metadata. So for example, if you download a log clip from a stock footage site, Premiere Pro is not able to detect the log space for that specific clip. So you have to go and manually select it. I also have this log clip selected here that was recorded from the Mac, uh, Blackmagic app on the iPhone and detect auto detect is not working. Premiere Pro can't identify it. So I'll have to go here into override media color space and select Apple log. And now it detects the color space. Again, I find that this is not that great. A little bit of an annoying thing. If you do want to work in Asus CCT and you want to use LUTs that you already have in Premiere Pro that are for Rec. 709, here is a quick workaround that I discovered. I am here in a sequence that is in the wide gamut Asus CCT color space with auto detect enabled. And I'm going to drop this LUT over here to these clips. So you can see it's pretty terrible, does not look good at all. A lot of just not smooth roll off between dark regions and highlights. Same with this thing here with this clip. You can see what it did to this. It just made it worse. Uh, it does not look great at all. And that's because that LUT was specifically for a Rec. 709 clip. So 
if you still want to do your corrections in ACCCT, you can do that. But now, before you apply your creative LUT, I'm going to create a new sequence. And you can also adjust some of your color management settings here in this window. So let's go under sequence, let's just select 4K, 24 frames per second. I will name this creative LUT. Under color management, this is where I'll set up the color space I want to use for this sequence. So I am going to select the Rec 09 and Rec 09 and just leave that as is. Select OK. And now under this creative LUT sequence, I'm going to bring this non-ACES output sequence that had these two clips into this new sequence. So let's find that non-ACES output. Let's drag that into this new sequence. And now we'll apply that LUT. There's still some further corrections that I can do. And I mean, there's, still, there's this issue still with this highlight this tube light here but for the purposes of this video depending on your clip this might work if you want to apply a creative light i still think that this is not the best workflow yet although this is now not in beta it's in the regular version of premiere pro i still think that there are things that premiere pro needs to address so hopefully in the future update to start to tweak these color management settings a little bit more just to make it better and usable but still very exciting that aces cct is now in premiere pro so that's it for this video i hope that this helped you out in any way and that you learned something new and if you're still watching here are a couple more videos you could watch next and i'll see you there